Book of Genesis chapter 17 Abraham and the Covenant of Circumcision When Abraham was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may take my that I may make my covenant between me and you, and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you and I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God and God said to Abraham as for you you shall keep my covenant you and your offspring after you throughout their generations this is my covenant which you which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring, both he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Isaac's birth promised. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael his son and all those born in his house or bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very day Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised, and all the men of his house, those born in the house, and those bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. So, here we see God's covenant with Abraham and the promising of Isaac, right? We see the Lord's, we see the Lord appear to Abram and then change his name to Abraham. Uh, you know, Sarai changes her name to Sarah. Well, the Lord changes her name to Sarah. And, uh, I got some notes here for what stuck out to me when I was reading through this, and I'm just going to run through them real quick. God's covenant with Abraham plus the fulfilling of God's promise. So here we see that God is promising Abraham's, like the generations of Abraham, that he will be Lord to them, essentially. That the people that descend from Abraham are the Lord's people. They are in covenant with him. And we also see God fulfilling his promise that he made to Abram, well, Abram at the time, but Abraham now, that the Lord will give him a son that Sarah will bear. And we see that be, 
not just promised again, but God outright saying that this is going to happen. Like, yeah, basically, like, promise, but, you know, it's the Lord, right? He, he can't lie. He can't. He can't cheat you out of a promise that he has made to you. Because that's just not in his nature. So. God is fulfilling his promise to Abraham. We see Isaac's birth promised in verse 16. I will bless her and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. So Isaac is promised, Isaac's birth is a thing that's going to happen and is because of, well no, it, I was going to say it's because of Abraham's faith that this happened, which is true, like Abraham has shown great devotion to the Lord, but it's also just the Lord's nature to bless Abraham. Verse 20, God's good plans for Ishmael. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes and I will make him into a great nation. So, Ishmael essentially born out of wedlock, but, you know, like, he is born out of wedlock, right? And Abraham was shown concern that he wanted Ishmael to live before the Lord because he is Abraham's son. And the Lord here is showing his good plans for Ishmael. He wants to bless Ishmael with princes in his, you know, line of descendants. And we see that God is good here to a child born out of wedlock. And that could be because in chapter 16, Hagar, the, uh, the, oh, what was she again? To, she was a servant, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna read through real quick. Yeah, she was a servant to Sarai at the time, but Sarah now. And, you know, when, after everything had happened between Abram and Sarai and Hagar, Hagar left to, I'm probably butchering that name too, sorry about that. Uh, she left to go to the wilderness essentially because of the contempt that she had felt upon Sarai. And there she met an the angel of the Lord who, as I have said in my video on chapter 16, I believe, is Jesus. And the Lord had heard her and had heard about what had happened. And he had listened to Hagar, right? And because of that, Ishmael got the name Ishmael, which means the Lord hears. I think, yeah, I think that's what it means. Ishmael means God hears. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, God had heard of Ishmael and he had listened to Ishmael's mother, right? So because of that, he has the good plans for Ishmael. And in verse 23, Then Abraham took Ishmael his son and all those born in his house or bought with his money every male among the men of Abraham's house, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Here we see Abraham's devotion to the Lord. He is listening to the Lord. He was given a command, and that very same day he followed up on the command. He was given the command from the Lord to circumcise the males in his house, and he did that that very same day. An extra note that I have here is that Abraham was promised a son when he was 86 years old. This was in chapter 15, I believe. Here. 
Yeah, 15, 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your hair, your very own son shall be your hair. So the Lord had promised Abram, well, Abram at the time, that he would have a son. And Abram was 86 years old at the time of that conversation, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but the next time that we hear of Abram's age, he is 86. Yeah, I want to try and find where it says that, just so, like, you know I'm not just making it up. Yeah, sorry about this, by the way. Yeah, all right. In chapter 16, verse 16, Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So that was after God had promised uh, Abram a son. Now, it is possible that Abram at the time thought that that was his son, like that was the promised son to him. But here we see that the Lord showed up to Abram, told him to change his, well, changed his name to Abraham, and then told him that he would have a son born from Sarah. And he was 99 years old when he had been promised Isaac. So I take this as like a little note that we need to remember that God is working on his timeline not ours. It may take a while for God to, well, it may feel like it's taken a while for God to fulfill his promise, but he fulfills his promise at the right time. It is his timing that is best for us. So yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.